How's it going guys? Daniel Mike here, coming to you as always from the Digital Warfare 24-7 forums, and today we are going to be looking at the gameplay of my good buddy Dictionary, aka Tom. Tom is going to be using the M27 suppressed on the map pod. He's going to be playing some domination without the benefit of a party. Now as he pushes up to B, let's talk a little bit about the differences between how Tom is going to be playing this match and how I played pod domination in the last Tactical Tuesday that I posted. When I posted it, my gameplay tended to be extremely frantic, running around with the MSMC, uh, all sorts of handling modifiers like quick draw and dexterity. The really interesting contrast here is going to be the dictionary is not using any kind of modifiers on his class at all. You'll see he just has the suppressor and extended mags there on his M27, and then he's running extreme conditioning, tack mask, fast hands, and hardline. So he's not using toughness, he's not, not using dexterity, uh, he's just going to have to rely on his positioning in this map, in this match, which is something that, that's really intriguing to me, and I really like players that play like this. I would say his playstyle most reminds me of Trust and Truth out of the people that I've reviewed thus far, just because he does play with that very methodical sort of approach to the game, and he doesn't use any modifiers to give him a better chance of rushing and taking chances and stuff like that. He is a very methodical player. So here we're going to see his approach for capping B has not been as successful as it could have been up to this point. Part of that I would uh, I would relate to the fact that he's been running right side from his spawn at CDOM. And that was a mistake that I made a lot last week if you guys remember that. Uh, I was coming up to the right side a lot and with all of those open head glitches I was getting taken out pretty quickly. Now the M27 I think is a pretty good choice for this map because there are so many important head glitches. And the M27 with that really low recoil, even though it might not have very good damage, it's going to be able to pick people off of head glitches really, really well. So watch for Dictionary to use it in that regard. Now, the one problem with his loadout, I think, is that with the M27's really low recoil, its only advantage is that its shots are going to uh, hit on target pretty much all of the time. So you're not going to be wasting bullets. But if you do not have toughness on your class, then that sort of negates the advantage of the M27 because your flinch is going to throw your bullets off very very, very quickly. Uh, you can see right there, he's trying to pick that guy off on a head glitch. Again, not the best idea to go off to the right there, but he's not even able to have a chance in that gunfight because he doesn't have toughness. So, I'm not so sure that Fast Hands is going to benefit him this much here. Uh, he doesn't have a secondary weapon. He doesn't really pick up any weapons, so he's mostly just using his M27. And he does have the trophy system and the C4, and that is going to be sped up a lot, the deployment of those two, of those two items. But I do not think that Fast Hands is maybe going to be the best choice here. If he swapped that out for Toughness, maybe he'd see some better results with the M27. But as you can see, he is actually starting to heat up with that M27, so uh, I, can't, I can't fault him for that. He does end up putting an excellent score up here and definitely has the right idea to use an assault rifle. So now that we've gotten past the first few minutes of this game that have been maybe a little bit slower with Dictionary trying to position, his teammates have this V set up now, and he's really going to be able to go to town. Look at him moving in on these guys in their spawn. He's able to take out one, two, he's on the Merciless here. He has, he has them spawning all over him right now. The spawns are definitely a little bit wonky on this A side of the map. Even if there's someone right on top of it, it does not push them to secondary spawns. So be aware of that if you're trying to flank that A spawn. Now, Dictionary is going to call in his Hellstorm, and one thing I noticed about how he calls in his Hellstorms is that he deploys them almost immediately. And I've seen a couple other players that I've reviewed do this as well. And a reason why I don't think that's good, a couple reasons actually, is first of all, it... If you, de if you deploy your cluster bombs really, really early, the cluster bombs travel a lot slower than the missile when it's being boosted, so your time to target is going to be a lot longer. Now that does two things. First of all, it's going to give, uh, give your targets a lot longer to get undercover before the bombs actually hit. And second of all, it's going to keep you vulnerable in that killstreak laptop for a longer period of time. So there you can see he doesn't have toughness, and that's going to end up making him flinch really hard. Another thing you might be able to use to compensate for not having toughness is a stock, so you can at least strafe out of their line of fire. But Dictionary isn't using that either. He isn't using any kind of modifier at all. But right here you can see he anticipates them spawning next to C really, really well. He can see, if we look at the mini-map, that all of his teammates were blocking the C spawn, uh, or the A spawn, rather, so he knew they were going to have to spawn over on C. And he read that really, really well and picks up the Fury kill there. So nice work from Dictionary as he pushes into the middle here. 
He takes some fire from that paw, but isn't able to react quite in time. Still, the damage has been done, and he is going to have his VSAT, his Hellstorm, and his Lightning Strike to unload on the enemy team. You can see he's ahead by a pretty good margin, and he's wisely going to save his streaks for the next round. At this point, he's going to be 30-8, and eight, leading his team by a very comfortable margin, and I believe some of the enemy teams are actually going to start quitting here, unfortunately, but... Um, like I was saying, I really like this this choice of loadout for for Dictionary for Tom to be using here. And as he moves in, let's see the approach that he takes to beat on. I really think that spawning A in, on this map, you have a really good advantage going down from pretty much any direction because you do have the high ground, and you also have an advantage in head glitches. The only advantage that I would see from the C side is that you have that flank if you run to the left and then across the bridge in front of the A side pod. Uh, that's a really good flank you can use. And look at that, already he's back up to his VSAT. He's going to be able to call in this lightning, or uh, Hellstorm rather. You see he boosts it there a little bit more in advance and is able to get his bomblets on target a little bit faster there. So he's going to call in his lightning strike here and pick up a quick kill. Now that he has the VSAT deployed, let's see the route that he runs into their spawn. Uh, either side that he runs here, he's going to have some good head glitches to work because he is coming from that A side. I do think that A side is significantly stronger, like I was saying, than the C side. So here he goes, he's going to be pushing up, he's going to take out that guy on the barrel head glitch. I think if you remember back to the video I posted last week, I was dying constantly at that spot, trying to work around their right hand side from C Dom to uh, get past those barrels, but it's nothing doing. It's a very poor place to engage. Here you see him making really good use of cover. He's not going to flip their spawns. He's going to sort of hover outside. Here he sees a big cluster of them spawning in together, and he sees a chance to make a play, so he's going to pick up one, two. That suppressor really, really doing good things for him. Here. See the guys that are all around him in the, in the spawn right now? They're just completely oblivious to him because he's got that suppressor on. And so if you're the kind of guy who likes to sit on the outside of spawns and try to kill people off spawn, the suppressor is going to be a really good option. And it's especially good on the M27 because the M27 does such low damage anyway that the suppressor really isn't going to affect it that much. You're not going to notice the drop off hardly at all. Nice little dipsy doodle play on that guy right there. It was a little risky since he didn't have uh, very much in the way of health, but right there you see that that was a triple kill waiting to happen that he probably could have had if he'd kept his shots on target with toughness again when you have a weapon that's so good at putting shot after shot right on target like the m27 i think toughness has got to be the way to go right there he flinches but he is able to get his shots back on target really the way i think that he succeeds in this match is that he does a great job of just planning out his routes he has a v set up for a lot of the time so he's able to really work his awareness into the equation when he's figuring out which which directions he wants to approach from like right here he sees that cluster of guys on c he knows he's going to be able to move in and these guys are not going to be able to see him coming he comes in behind them and he's going to pick up a couple more now his VSAT's actually going to go out, so let's see how he actually works without the VSAT. He's going to deploy that trophy right there. Really good job to reload cancel out of that reload. Uh, a lot of people, they'll just start reloading, and when they get caught, they'll panic. They'll try to run away, or they'll try to knife. Um, always be aware of how many rounds you have in your magazine. Just reload cancel out of that if you don't think that you're going to have uh, enough time to go to a different option. So there you see him boosting his Hellstorm a little bit more, so maybe he has a little bit more of an idea on that now. But I do really like the methodical approach to gameplay. Uh, I don't always think it's possible, like, if your team is really, really far behind and you just need bodies to get on the flags, uh, then, then there is definitely a need for people to rush really, really hard for the objectives. But what Dictionary shows here is just his ability to dictate the flow of the game, and he controls it just by where he positions himself. He doesn't feel the need to, like, rush deadlong into enemy concentrations. He, he m maneuvers around and is able to engage them on his own terms. So uh, a really good play style there, one that you should seek to emulate. And if you guys feel like it, maybe even try taking off, you know, take off those weapon modifiers like dexterity and stock. That would be my advice from this gameplay is maybe see how you do without those, without those handling modifiers, I should have said, and see if you can get yourself to rely a little bit more on your positioning and I think that's going to do a really good job of improving your overall awareness and ability to perform in the game. So there we go, Dictionary's final score is going to be 50 and 12. Thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned till next.